there is another thing that I'm very excited about, and that's models. Any fans of models or pop-ups or anything like that? Oh, VUCA is a fan of models. Nasa is not. Nasa, you don't like carousels either. Mm, that's a pattern here. Uh, Nicholas is... Nicholas, you do like carousels as well. You see kind of two camps building up here. That's, um, that's interesting. Well, let's take a look at models. Uh, nobody likes them. And most of the time for a good reason, because they look like this. Who would like to be interrupted? Anybody? You are deep into your workflow and you're doing all the things that you need to do. And then all of a sudden, maybe when you send a bank transfer to somebody, you get this beautiful notification. Please give us feedback or anything of that kind. That's no fun. That's, um, that's not great. In fact, you know, when you think about mobiles, they are very disruptive. And there has been a lot of research about models and how they're horrible and how they're bad. And in fact, there are actually five, um, I think four, four or five uh, particular things that I always try to bring up to my clients when we do consultancy um, of things that they impact. Uh, one of the important thing is that people who are disrupted, and it doesn't matter if it's a model, I don't know, uh, a screen turns off, a uh, connection is off or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. It always leads to the same problems. First, people forget the as left condition, right? So if, uh, if you're typing a text or to send somebody or an email, right? And all of a sudden the machine shuts down, you'll be forgetting the state where you were, right? At least half of, half of people will actually do that. Um, then you also forget to return to original task if you're multitasking. And obviously, you also slow down because you're being interrupted all the time, right? So that's not surprising. And that's coming from a study from 2014 by Fergus Craig. There was another one, which was done in 2006, which I tend to quote quite a bit. Because people tend to use, when interrupted, people tend to need 3 to 27% more time to complete tasks. And they have two times the increase in anxiety. And the important part, they commit two times the number of errors, right? I try to argue, always try to argue with the number of errors because errors can be very, very expensive. If you do not know how to resolve an error, how to fix it, you're going to abandon, right? Or you will never be able to proceed. So this is what I try to bring up to the table when we talk about those annoying metal models, right? And so they are really weird, those models, because in many ways, I, um, I try to, I mean, I feel like they're like cats, right? They're here and they kind of require attention no matter what you do and you cannot do anything until you resolve the issue. That's disrespectful, you know, a little bit, right? So, because when you see this, you know, what can you do? You just need to act on it. There is no other way. Now, interestingly enough, there is a, actually a, more like a family of different models. It's not like there is a model there are different kinds of models and it depends on what interaction design is like. And this is coming from Nielsen Norman Group. They published a beautiful article about all kinds of models and the user research they've done on that. And essentially, a model, as we usually call it, as we usually see it, is something that users can't, in, when, when users cannot interact with background content. A pop-up shows up, everything else is blocked. Like everything that's behind that model or behind that window is blocked. On the other hand, we have a light box where background is dimmed, right? But you could potentially scroll down. Sometimes you get that, right? Um, here you have also a non-light box where the background is not dimmed at all. And then you have a non-model, which is just a window which you can close, but you can still operate everything and click everything in the background. So depending on the situation, you might see one you know, series of the family or the other. Like here's an example of one of them. Can we guess what it is? Oh, that's that's. Uh, you know, we, we cannot interact with the background, right? So this is really blocking us. But sometimes we need them, right? For example, when it's a new customer that you want to sign up in your enterprise application, it might be useful to actually have a model. Why? Because you don't want to miss the context of the background. There might be some important information in the background that you want to persist while using that model, right? At the same time, as you keep maybe doing other things like quick view, or you want to just briefly look into something, right? And then go back, right? And just enough to close the button or just press escape key. And then off you go back to the same state. Because imagine if you have to scroll and you have infinite scroll, right? Kind of bringing people to a new page all the time would be devastating because it would massively slow them down. Here, we probably want to show a model. Maybe it doesn't have to block the screen. We want to show it so they can close it and return back to the initial state. Right? And then we can also have other things like, for example, if it's critical actions, like deleting a customer, maybe you want to bring attention to that thing. Otherwise, you might be making a mistake. Right? 
Uh, or here's another one where you might want to have something that's requested a little bit more complexity. We have multiple steps. You want to upload file, check the file, confirm import, and so on and so forth. And in all these conversations about all these forms, we tend to forget that Rust, they have a lot of value, actually, because they, again, enable us to persist context, which can be very important. Unfortunately, most of the time, we don't use it in that way because we have newsletter pop-ups and, um, I don't know, annoying ad pop-ups and so on. But in general, they are very relevant, right? And in fact, they are not all equal, right? So the ones that I showed right now are actually quite useful. They, again, do not allow us to do certain actions without interrupting current state. So people do not get lost. They do not forget. All the things that I mentioned do not happen. However, you also get slightly different kinds of models like this. Right? And onboarding tours or any kind of notification or uh, you know, anything that really interrupts, something that's automatically initiated, not by the user, but by the system, is going to be disruptive like hell. Right? So we need to be very, very cautious about those things and show them only then when we know that people will value this interruption. Right? On the other hand, you might have something else like, oh, you're about to be signed out. You've been spending too much time on the page. Right? Those things are necessary but maybe we don't need to block the entire page. So the intent that we have here is we want to indicate and inform the user very clearly that they need to do something to continue working on the page, right? But maybe blocking everything is not necessary here. Maybe it could be just a little window that's bright enough, right? Um, to highlight that there is something that has changed. And obviously also for accessibility reasons, we would need to highlight it too, right? And so people, don't exhibit much annoyance with uh, self-initiated models when they click on a button and something happens. That's fine. But they get very frustrated with any kind of auto-triggered models, right? So, however, if a model helps users avoid critical mistakes, they find them acceptable. This, at least this is the experience that I had, right? So if you can avoid auto-triggered models, that's probably a good idea to do so. And so when we look into use cases, that's pretty much what I would say works and what doesn't work. First of all, we don't want to use them kind of blocking everything. I'm talking about models kind of blocking where the background is totally blocking, uh, blocked, right? We don't want to use them for new set of box pop-ups, at least not initially when somebody enters the page. We might want to highlight it and integrate it better in the UI, right? Uh, feature notifications, well, it needs to be a notification that can be dismissed, but not something that you can, that actually blocks the user. Uh, onboarding models are difficult. Um, Auto-triggered models are really bad most of the time. Whenever you show a model that is not related at all to the task that customer is doing, that's going to be a problem. Uh, if it's too complex and contains many pages or many error messages or many nested models, and I've seen this in enterprise as well, this is not going to work well. And anything that contains a lot of steps, like you know, a wizard of sorts will probably be difficult. And obviously when somebody is focused on something, like again, maybe they want to send a, you know, money from one account to the other, we don't want to show model there. But for other things, if we know that users will value the disruption, if we know that it's specific for a task at hand, if we know it's something that they keep kind of using over and over, right? Maybe that's fine, right? In the same way, display important warnings. If you need immediate confirmation or user input, for example, you're booking a flight, the price has changed. You might want to, the user to be aware of that, to confirm a destructive action, to avoid mirrors, mistake, and just to verify and review complex input. For example, that case, like the, the example from uh, Gmail, is a pretty good one. Seems like you forgot to attach a file. That makes sense. And I would argue that most of the time you will be performing better. And again, I'm talking not about user experience here, but about business. You'll be performing better if you do this instead of blocking the central screen. I would challenge you to test if, if you do use ad uh, models or anything, newsletter pop-ups or anything of that kind, to allow people to interact with the rest of the screen while showing this newsletter if you absolutely need it. It might be performing better than if you block the entire screen, right? Um, another example of that is you know, Gmail, obviously, right? Where we get kind of, we can view or can compose a message while also looking at the other message at the same time. That's an example of a non-model, right? It's just a window that happens to live on the page. Everybody still with me here? Or do you feel like, oh, it's totally mad. So it's no way. But 
One thing that's really important to understand here that models per se are really complicated from a technical perspective. You have all these things that's called focus management, which might take a lot of time depending on how you build your application, right? Because when you use a model, you need to make sure that when somebody is using the tab key to navigate through the page and they open a model, you need to trap do the focus trapping. So they actually keep focusing within that model they need to be able to dismiss the model with the escape key into return focus to where they were before and have to manage all of that. Especially if you have a complex application, this might be, this might be quite difficult, right? And in fact, there is a different kind of model that we usually just take for granted, and that's a tooltip. I do not like tooltips. I cannot stress enough how they should be banned forever. Can you guess why? Oh, Ellen is wondering why. Well, it's not because I don't like them. It's because they very often, they do more harm than help. We show a tooltip at the time when we want to communicate something to the user when they, are, when they have a question, when they don't know what to do, when they, when they may be locked out and things like that. But there are better way of communicating it instead of a uh, tooltip, which is really a model. Why? Well, for example, this is not helpful. You are about to type the password and giving a hint as a model or a tooltip like this, not only blocking you from input, you have to type and then you have to open and reopen and reclose um, that bar or that model in order to be able to type anything. That's not great. That's not very useful. Um, you cannot read a tooltip and type at the same time. And it doesn't matter you know, if it's a small one, short one, if you display it on the right and the left. From on mobile, it causes tremendous harm. It's really, really painful at times, right? So what can we do better then? Well, what if instead, and I know that this sounds like a revolution here, but what if we show important information right in here, right under the label? That's probably a bit better and also a bit simpler. And also you don't have to do all the focus management stuff that I just describing previously. And I know, I know, I know, I know. Sometimes we have situations where we have really complicated forms. We cannot afford showing all the hints for everything at all times. Well, there is another pattern for that. And that pattern is actually really useful. Use a little accordion, right? So contact us for help, for example. Well, just whenever somebody clicks on it and could be a hint, right, just show that text in line, right? And this is what it could look like, right? You have your password. It might be very complicated requirements that you have there. You don't need to show it as a tooltip, right? You just click on the tooltip, on the, um, sorry, tooltip, on the accordion and off you go. You show that what you actually supposed to type. And you know what? It's right above the input field where I'm typing it. How convenient is that, right? So if, I mean, I'm not trying to, if, if you have a lot of tooltips and you've just been working on a project where you just integrated a ton of them, maybe it's, um, it could be useful to reconsider. Just saying, because they have a lot of issues, um, just basic issues, actually. Is it okay if all the forms and content then moves downwards? I mean, frankly, because people are clicking or tapping on the area which is you know, below the label, they expect the content to appear below it anyway. So they are not typing at the moment, right? Unless they are typing on desktop and then they're clicking away. That might be an issue if you have a very long um, uh, like description, but I didn't see it being a big problem, to be honest. Right? And also it's more accessible, obviously, right? Still, everybody still with me? I can go like this forever. Like literally, by the way, I do have a model um, checklist, which has 58 items. You will find it in the slides as well. So these are all the things I ask when somebody starts working on a model and usually